Are you sick and tired of your laser cut pieces fitting together like this? Or even like this? Are you fed up with those sleepless nights you've spent laser cutting trying to get that perfect fit? Well then it sounds like you need to understand kerf. Adjusting for kerf lets you fit those laser cut pieces together seamlessly without all the hassle. Hey guys, it's Victoria and in this video I'm going to show you how to adjust kerf to fit two laser cut pieces perfectly together. First, it's important to understand what kerf is. Kerf is the amount of extra material that is burned away when laser cutting. This happens because the laser beam is slightly bigger than the design. When you're creating your design, you need to account for that extra space that is going to be burned away in order for the pieces to fit perfectly together. For materials, you're going to need digital calipers. I got these from Amazon for around $10. And you'll also need the materials that you're using to create your design. I'm going to be using wood and acrylic that I got from inventables.com. We need to figure out three measurements. The kerf adjustment, and then we also need to figure out what size to make the slot in which the object is going to be placed into. So we need to figure out how big to make the width of the slot, and then how big to make the height of the slot. To find the kerf adjustment for your laser cutter, take the measurement of your intended cut and then subtract the measurement of the actual cut and that will give you the kerf. To do this, I created a square that is one inch wide, which was the intended cut size, and then laser cut it and measured with the digital calipers to find out the actual cut size. The intended cut was 1 inch minus the actual cut of 0.99, so that gives me a kerf of 0.01. Now we need to find the height of the slot, which is the length of the opening. Make sure that you're measuring the material that you're going to be using in your final project. To find the slot height, take the measurement of the material thickness and subtract the kerf. Material thickness can be slightly off from what it's supposed to be. So say you order wood that's 1 8 inch thick, it can still be a little bit off. So it's important to measure that with digital calipers. My material thickness was 0.12 inches minus the 0.01 kerf gives me a slot height of 0.11. Now we need to find the slot width, which is how wide the opening is. To find the slot width, take the measurement of the intended width of the object and subtract the kerf. The intended width of the object is referring to the wedge of the design that's going to be placed inside of your slot. So for this example, the intended object width is going to be 1 inch because the width of this wedge is 1 inch. Minus my kerf of 0 0.01, which gives me a slot width of 0.99. So now we have the three measurements we need, which are a kerf adjustment of 0.01 inches, a slot height of 0.11, and a slot width of 0.99. All right, now I'm on my computer and I have Adobe Illustrator open. And I'm going to go up to Window and then click on Transform. And this will just open up a panel that will allow me to see the dimensions of something when I click on it. And I'll also be able to change those dimensions. So I've already created this design and this is going to be the base. And we just need to create the slot in which this wedge is going to be placed into. The size of this wedge is one inch wide and the height is 0.125 inches high. And that is because the thickness of the material we're using is 1 8 inches thick. And then if you divide one by eight, it is 0.125. So you just want to make sure that the wedge that's going into the slot is the same height as the material thickness, so that way it will be flush with the base. Alright, so now we just need to create our slot, and we've already figured out what dimension it needs to be, which I have over here. Now I'm grabbing my rectangle tool, and then I'm going to click anywhere, and then for the width, I'm going to make it 0.99. And then we want the height to be 0.11. All right, now I'm going to highlight the slot and the circle. And I'm going to go over here to my align tools and click on horizontal align center and then vertical align center. 
and now the slot is centered within the circle. So now this design can be saved as an SVG and then uploaded to the Glowforge app for printing. You're also going to want to make a kerf adjustment when you're cutting out one piece of material and placing it into another. For example, if I want to cut out the petals of this daisy on white, and then cut this middle circle out on yellow and then put it inside of the petals, we're gonna have to account for curve. So to do that, I'm going to copy and paste this circle and I'm gonna wanna add 0 0.01 to add my curve. So I'm gonna go over here to my width of the circle and I'm gonna add 0 0.01, so it's gonna be 0.2197 and 0.2196. And then that will account for that extra material that's being burned away. And this circle will fit perfectly inside the petals. If your curve adjustment isn't giving you the exact fit that you want, you can always modify it slightly by adding a point or subtracting a point from the width or height. I want to show another example using the equations that we just learned. So here I'm creating a new design on my iPad. Now I'm going to vectorize the design in Adobe Illustrator and apply that curve equation to the measurements to ensure that the pineapple is going to fit tightly inside of the base. Alright, so now I have my vectorized pineapple here and we need to create the base. And I have all of our equations here on the left hand side. In the description below, I'll include a link to a file with all of the equations that you can download for free. Alright, so I am going to draw the base. I want it to be a circle, so I'm going to go over here to my tools and hold down on the rectangle and then click on the ellipse tool. And I want the width to be 2.25 and then the height to be 0.75. I like it to just be a little bit more narrow than the design. Measure the material thickness of the design that is going inside of the slot. So for this example, I'm measuring the wood because that's what I'll be using to make the pineapple. All right, so now we need to create our slot for the base. And so first we need to figure out the height of the slot and I've already measured the thickness of this material and it was 0.12 and then I'm going to subtract the curve which is 0 0.01 so that's going to give us a height of 0.11 and now we need to figure out the width of the slot so we need to take the intended width of the object so that's going to be the width of this wedge so I'm just clicking on it and I have my transform panel open and you can see the width here is 1.16 so that's going to be our intended width of the object. And then subtracting our curve, 0.01. So that's going to give us a slot width of 1.15. Alright, so now I need to actually create that slot. So I'm just going to hit M on the keyboard and that's going to give me the rectangle tool. And then I'm just going to click in the middle of the circle. And then for the width, we have our slot width of 1.15. And then for the height, we're going to do point 0.11 and I'm just going to highlight these both and then align them. Okay, so now I'm just going to go to File and then Save As and I'm going to save this as an SVG. And then for decimal places, I'm going to leave three. I'm just going to upload that to the GoForge app and print it. Now it's time to paint the pineapple and put it together. These are the colors that come. These are the colors that come. Alright, 
that's all I have for this video and if you have any ideas for what you want to see in my next video, please leave it below in a comment. And I also have a Glowforge digital download store which I'm going to include in the description. And also if you're in the market for Glowforge, I'm going to include my referral link in the description where you can get anywhere from $125 to $500 off a Glowforge depending on which model you get and I'll get paid that amount as well. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.